Yo, no lifesavers and heroes out there. I want to tell you guys about when I almost died, when I got shot five times and how it took such a variety of people to save my life. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this off from the point where I was shot and I was on the floor and I was pretty much dying. So this happened uh, inside my house and I was literally in front of the door at the time. I, w I was renting like a back house, uh, like a fully furnished, like how, like someone might have a guest house that, that's like a full house. And that's what I was renting. And ironically, man, like, I, I never saw the owners. The owners were, even though they lived right next door, they were rarely ever there. And especially uh, the owner's son. His son, in, in like two years, I probably saw him like three times. So I'm shot and I'm pretty much bleeding to death. And like I GI Joe crawled outside my house, like in front of the door. I had the GI Joe crawl back inside to get my phone. I'm shot in the face. Um, I thought I was also shot in the left eye, so my left eye was completely blind. Um, I was shot in my throat. I had a hole in and a hole out of my trachea. I was shot in both lungs and I I felt a bullet literally go through, through me like from my right to my left side. And I have more exit wounds than entry wounds. So it's it's not fully clear how many times I was shot, but the good guesstimation is that it, it was about five times. Um, just counting all the entry wounds and the exit wounds, it, it's about five times. And um, so as I'm, I'm calling the 911 and uh, I'm asking for an ambulance, I told them I, I was I'm shot. Um, I could barely breathe because both my lungs are collapsed at, at this point or they're collapsing and I'm um, literally bleeding into my throat and it, it, it's like I was just breathing like through the tiniest straw just like <laughs> you know just just trying to get as little air in as, as I possibly can Not, I mean the most amount but I mean it was just the, the least amount of air was actually coming in, you know? And they asked me, uh, the ambulance asked me, where do you, where, where are you? Where, like, are you in your house? No, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm at home. And they're like, what's your address? And I'm literally on my hands and knees on the floor. Uh, I'm just trying to, trying to breathe. And for some reason I couldn't, remember my address you know and I, and it's on my phone's on speaker and, and I'm literally just gushing blood out of my face onto onto my phone screen I'm surprised that I was even able to swipe it open because there was so much fucking blood just gushing on my phone um so just, even just that, the fact that I was able to open my phone through through Face ID, you know, <laughs> I'm surprised to recognize my face at that point. And at that moment that I'm trying to give them my address and I'm not able to, my neighbor just so happens to show up, of which he never comes back there. He, like by by our, my section where where I'm living, like never ever show up. But he happened to show up randomly, and I I'm like, dude, give him the address. And he's like, he 
he's he's frozen. He looks like he look, he's seen a ghost, you know. And he with his broken English, he's he's telling the address. And at that point, his son comes, man. And this is like the third time or fourth time uh, I've ever seen his son. And whenever I've seen him, it's just been from a distance. And his son happens to come, who, who speaks perfect English uh, like me. And, you know, he, he immediately takes the phone and goes, this is the address, this is where we're at. And he goes, is there anything you want me to tell the first responders? And, and I'm like, tell them that, that I've been shot in the lungs and uh, I'm about to pass out really soon. And, and they need to get to me really fast. Um, because both both my lungs are punctured, and and he he pretty much said that to them, and I, I ended up passing out a few times during that process until the first responders showed up. I, I don't remember much after. The, like there there's glimpses, but as far as me being in front of my house. Once I, once I told him uh, that my lungs are punctured, and, and he said it to them, I um, I passed out. I don't remember. And then the next thing I remember is that I uh, the ambulance came. That's the next thing I remember. But during this process, man, it turns out. So he, he, he later on, you know, they told me the story of what happened. He told me, uh, basically, he, he told them, look, man, I, I work on an ambulance, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a responder too. And I have a bunch of my medical gear in my trunk. What is it you guys want me to do? And they told them, you need to put in a patch up the holes, you know? So he got his kit and this guy literally patched the holes. So the way your lungs work is, um, think of them like a balloon, right? And if you have a hole in the balloon, you can't really fill it. So you gotta kinda just put tape, put your hand, put air, somewhat, you gotta patch that hole. This dude was able to patch that hole. And him just showing up and being able to do that alone saved my life, right? Um, the fact that his dad showed up saved my life, man. And th all I remember is like, for some reason, I wanted to go to the middle of the street. So I kept trying to GI Joe crawl to the middle of the street. Um, and, he, and he kept telling me, they're telling you like, don't move. But I, I wasn't listening, the amount of pain I was in and and the fact that I couldn't breathe and, and all, I, I, I just wanted to go to the middle of the street for some fucking reason. I think in, in the back of my head, I was thinking if I was in the street, the ambulance would uh, see me better because I was like, I, I really thought I was gonna die. I, I assumed I was gonna die and I, I was about to give up on the fact that I was gonna make it, but for some reason I thought to myself, you know what, man, if, if I can ride this out and stay alive to the point where the ambulance comes, I just might fucking make it. And I was just trying to stay alive. Just, I, I just kept on trying to push push to not pass out and push to right so the first responders come and, and you know they take me I, I don't remember how they took off my sweater but um I also had you know a shirt a wife beater you know my jeans my boxers and these these two do the, the two uh paramedics they they put me on the stretcher and with these scissors, man, both dudes, like just one on my left left foot, one on my right foot, with these crazy scissors just instantly went up in like point fucking two seconds. I was butt naked, literally butt naked, two seconds, like point two seconds, right? And I remember being put on the hospital, uh, in the back of the ambulance and 
with the fire department's ambulance, uh, a police officer also jumped in to the ambulance just to escort me. Um, and he was a young dude, probably in his late 20s, early 30s. He was young, but he was not a rookie. I, I could instantly see it in his face that he was not a rookie. And I remember the way he was looking at me. And he was looking at me like, fuck man, this guy has the same look, the build, size as me, meaning me and that officer, right? And I could see he like his gears are turning and he's thinking like, fuck, this could be me with the job I have, you know? Um, and I saw that look in his face and, and I, I saw how he kind of was feeling sorry for me. And I, I think he was kind of also impressed that I wasn't really making any noises or I wasn't really moaning or, or bitching or anything. You know, um, and like we had this unspoken moment, you know, without saying any fucking words. So uh, at that point, like they're trying to put this oxygen mask on me, on my face, and I keep trying to push it away because I can't breathe. And uh, the paramedic tells me, this is pure oxygen, it's gonna help you breathe. And I, I then let him put it on my face and I kind of pulled it off my face while looking at the police officer you know and uh, I was just trying to make him feel a little better because I could see like he went to a dark place in his head you know and so I was like how's your day going and he's and he just paused and he's like way better than yours and I just started laughing and I passed out from laughing, you know? And then I don't remember what happened after I passed out. And then next thing I remember is I wake up and basically they're opening the ambulance doors to, to, to rush me into the, into the hospital. And I could see all these people that are in the hospital and they're telling them move and, and they're looking at me like like they're looking at a fucking ghost i remember everybody's face just shocked because i was only covered from my my lower body down my so all the all the trauma i took was in my upper body so i i guess all those people were able to see me bleeding through all kinds of places or so you know so the fire department saved my life right the the paramedics the police officers that showed up i mean the amount of people that it took to save my life was crazy because i had been shot and they don't they didn't have enough information to know if it was even safe for them to come and save my life. So they had to be escorted by police. They couldn't just show up, right? So, um, and the police were real cool about it because I had my, my, I lived with the Pipua at the time. And, you know, they were super friendly to my dog. I, I, I like when I woke up way later, I, I was hoping they didn't shoot my dog by accident thinking she was aggressive or something because she loves to jump on people and play but no they were cool man and i'm telling you these police officers even saved my life and then i get to the hospital and even though they take me to one of the best trauma centers in los angeles um i, I went to lady of the lady of the holy cross uh in the valley and um so there there was the primary doctor but he had never done surgery on someone's trachea your trachea is basically the tube that connects your the back of your throat where you breathe it connects your lungs together and it connects your mouth that's your trachea um 
a little different than your esophagus, but it's essentially your esophagus. It's your tracheus, that too. So they had, he had never done a trachea surgery before because usually people that get shot in the trachea or, or they take severe damage to it, they, they don't survive. Most people don't survive to the point of even getting to the hospital. And somehow this, these doctors and nurses, man, they, of which I don't remember a lot of it now right so once i go into the hospital i want like as they're pushing me through the hospital to get to the the icu i guess or the er um i, I don't remember beyond that until i wake up four days later you know so but they rush me through and somehow this doctor and these nurses kept me alive and they got a nurse a, a, another doctor to fly out from fucking new york to la in an emergency flight so that he can come and and do the trachea surgery with this doctor right and this dude flies out and Somehow they kept me alive through this fucking process and then he shows up and basically they sliced my back open man like like a fucking fish. Uh, they pretty much sliced my right shoulder blade like from my side to nearly my neck my entire shoulder blade line they just sliced me completely open man. And they had to go around my heart from the back. They went around my heart and fixed my trachea somehow. And the list of things they did to save my life, man. Just pages and pages and pages of, of stuff they did to save my life. Um, from my face to... My, my neck, so air had gone into my neck. My neck was like twice the size it normally is. Air had gone between my lungs and my chest cavity. I mean, both lungs collapsed. So they're patching and fixing and, and they're making this shit. They're making it happen, man. Like, uh, and I wake up four days later out of this induced coma. So I was in a four day induced coma so that they can do the surgeries plus let me heal without moving around, right? And fuck man, they, they kept me alive. And when I woke up, I, you know, pff, all I remember is like, fuck. The amount of pain, I, like that's the first thing that hit me was like just holy shit. I, I felt like I, I was run over by a fucking bus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how much pain I was in, and and they had maxed out the pain medication, dude. And oddly, the second thing I remember is holy fuck, I'm not in depression, <laughs> which is so weird. Like I went from from being completely and like severely depressed to I woke up to pain as my first thought and my second thought was I'm not in depression and then back to holy fuck I'm in a lot of pain <laughs> you know and then I had to go through this whole process of like I had at one point I think like six different things down my throat I had all kinds of fucking tubes through my chest, through my side, through my like IVs from my neck to my arm, to my hands, to my legs. Like it's just, there was maybe like six, seven machines in my room. I didn't know even know what half of them did, but I do know um, the machines were breathing for me for at least at least a week and a half about a week week and a half the machines were helping me breathe 
and all the stuff they were doing to, to fix me up, man. Um, just the, the sheer number of people it took to save my life, man. It, it was crazy. And, I, and, and the large majority of people were so nice and so sympathetic. And, and I just couldn't say thank you enough to these people. Man, and every single one of them were heroes man like these people every from the beginning to the end all these people fucking helped me survive you, you know um and not to mention my family and what they went through right so i'm i'm, I'm i don't have the best relationship with like my parents or or my sister but Dude, they were there, and because I, I didn't communicate so much, so very often with, with my mom, um, but her being my mom and not knowing who shot me, why I was shot, how it happened, or anything, what she did is she she flagged me so that no one can visit me without her specific approval. Of which, um, I a couple of my really close friends were a little upset about that, but I explained it to them that you know, hey man, she didn't know, and honestly, she did the right thing because she didn't know who shot me. You know what I'm saying? So she was just being a mother and being protective, um, and it doesn't even matter because those those couple of friends they snuck into the hospital and came and saw me anyway. And they saw my mom, and my mom's like, what are you doing here? They're like, dude, of course we're going to come and see you. And she laughed, and, and then, uh, yeah, she was okay with, with you know, because I grew up with these these friends. So she, once she saw them, she's like, okay, yeah, come on, you know, and uh, just asked them a bunch of questions. And everyone was in, everyone was in the dark. No one, no one knew really anything. So, um... Even my sister showed up and she stayed with me. Just like I, I would tell them, you don't have to. You guys don't have to stay with me, you know. But and my my dad came and st stayed in my room and stayed overnight on an uncomfortable chair, falling asleep. My sister did the same thing. My friends did the same thing. My mom did the same thing. Just the level of support and it, it just. It, it was beautiful, man, and, and fucked up at the same time, right? And, um, yeah, and then once I came to and, you know, my mom told me, like, because I, I asked her, I was like, well, how come there's nobody here, you know? Um, which is really weird because, you know, I'm, I'm real close with my friends and, like, I know my friends. There's no way my friends aren't going to be there. There's no way, like... You know, there's a handful of people. Like, there's no way. So I asked my mom, "Where are they?" And she's like, "Oh, I put a thing." And I was like, "What do you mean you put you 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 put a flag?" Like, and I'm doing all this through writing. I can't even fucking speak. Um, and I was like, "Man, take it off!" Like, none of these people know what's happening. No one is involved in anything. Just. I, I understand what you're doing and why you did it and good good job on doing that thank you for that um, but it's it's unnecessary so I, I told her and she lifted the, the you know so I wasn't flagged and people can actually visit and then you know suddenly everyone was able to come and visit and um, I think too many people came to visit me um, of which I wasn't too comfortable with it because I'm a, I'm a person like I don't like to show my my weaknesses too much you know um, I don't want to see I don't want people to see me uh, on on my worst day type of thing and that that's pretty much as bad as it could be and people are seeing me in that condition you know um, and it's different when it's like your really close friends or it's your family but once it becomes like distant family and it becomes acquaintances and you know it's like 
on that situation like that everybody wants to not everybody is 100% genuinely there because they care for you you know like I, I had like my dad's friends visiting me and that was just out of the sheer respect to my dad you know and what he's going through so they're showing up if you guys understand what I'm saying so it's not like uh, I don't want to I don't want to degrade these people by any way shape or form because that's not what I'm trying to say but what I'm trying to say is like uh, you, you kind of don't want every single person to see you that way right um, and it, it was okay though because after like the first couple of days and then it just became okay you know all the people that just came to show respect showed up and then it was just my friends and my family that had to deal with what's going on and most of the nurses i cannot say anything bad about them most of them were so sweet and so nice and understanding of how much pain i was in and and at times i wasn't the most easiest patient to deal with because i was in, in extreme pain and stuff and um and the reason why i guess i'm making this video is to is to is to show my respect and acknowledge all the people that were involved that that were involved from saving my life to helping me to being there for me to to comforting me to all like it, it took it took a, a small village of people to do this and I cannot be grateful enough for all these people and I, I wasn't able to see all of them after I left the hospital because once you leave ICU it's almost impossible to go visit ICU unless someone you, you have a family member in there so I wasn't even able to really go in and see the doctors and, but I did call and be this is me and thank you guys and whatnot on my way like when i was at home i i had to call the ambulance once or twice uh for me for my dad my dad had his own issues so it was the same first responders that showed up and i i thanked them and yeah they told me like it was like walking into a house of horrors type of shit you know and they're surprised I made it and it was just crazy. Um, I even ran into a couple of the police officers and they were like, how, how you doing man? Like, I'm surprised you're on your feet already. I was like, yeah, and one, one of the officers is like, you know, there's someone looking out for you, you know? Um, and I told them, yeah, it was you guys. <laughs> and you know, I was like, I love it. you know, thank you very much, I, I really, appreciate what, what what you did and thank you for being part of the part and saving my life and you know thank you guys i cannot uh appreciate you guys more um and so from one man to another man thank you guys very much and i shook their hand and um i genuinely meant it you know and uh so yeah, this video goes out to all those heroes, first responders, all those people with talents and, and, and will and drive to save people. You guys are fucking amazing. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to end it at that. Uh, and I think I'm going to stop cruising around and I'm actually going to go to the gym now. So, solo bolo, you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you guys once again. You guys are fucking heroes. Peace.